Hello friends, welcome to the Vibe of House of Anatomy. Today's topic is a patella bone. Now the patella is the largest sesamoid bone. It develops in the tendon of a quadriceps femoris muscle. Now the patella is having, it is a triangular, inverted triangular in the shape. It is having an apex uh, base, two border, medial and lateral and two surface, anterior and the posterior. First, we will see the side determination of the patella. The apex is facing downwards, base facing upwards. The anterior surface is rough and the posterior surface in its upper three-fourth part, it is smooth and articular. Now, third point, in the posterior upper two-third articular part, its lateral part is larger whereas the medial portion is smaller. Okay? So, the trick is you should keep the uh, patella bone on the table in such a way that the apex is facing opposite to you, base is facing towards you and the articular surface should touches the table. So, the patella should be of that side on which side it will lay. So, this patella is of a right side. It is laying on a right side. So, it is of a right side patella. Now, we see the features in the detail. The patella is having an apex of base, two border and two surface. The apex is facing downwards. Its posterior surface lies below the articular, smooth articular surface and rough. It provides the attachment of a ligamentum patellae. Now, the ligamentum patellae is a expansion of a quadriceps femoris muscle and we can use this ligamentum uh, patellae for tapping with the hammer to uh, check the knee jerk. The second base, the base is facing upwards and it will provide the insertion of rectus femoris in front and vastus intermedius behind. Now the border, the lateral border and the medial border. The lateral border provides the insertion of a vastus lateralis in its only upper one third part and the remaining lower part provides attachment of a lateral patellar retinaculum. Whereas the medial border, remember, it provides the insertion of vastus medialis in its upper two third part and the lower one third part provides the attachment of medial patellar retinaculum. So, the area of the insertion of vastus medialis is larger than the area of the insertion of vastus lateralis. Okay. Now, the third thing, the anterior surface is a rough and it is related to the prepatellar bursa. The inflammation of the prepatellar bursa is known as a prepatellar bursitis and it is common in the housemates or a minors. So, it is also known as a housemates knee or a minors knee, prepatellar bursitis. Now, the last and the important part, the posterior surface. The posterior surface is smooth and articular in its upper two-third part whereas it is rough and non-articular in the lower one-third part where it forms the posterior surface of an apex. Now, we concentrate on the upper two-third articular part. This area will articulate with the patellar articular surface of a lower end of the femur uh, to make a joint which is a saddle variety of synovial joint. Now, this articular area is divided into larger lateral part and smaller medial part by a vertical ridge. Right? Now, again, this smaller medial portion is divided by another faint vertical ridge into the medial strip and the rest of the medial portion. Now, this rest of the medial portion and the large lateral part is divided into three area by two horizontal line. Like this. The medial portion and the lateral, large lateral 
uh, area is divided into three uh, parts by two horizontal line that is upper part lower part uh, middle part and the lower part and the fourth one is a medial strip now this different part of this articular surface will articulate with the pre uh, the uh, patellar articular surface of a lower end of the femur in the different position of a knee joint for example first the lower part articulate with the lower end of the femur in the full extension of a knee joint second the middle portion articulate with the lower end of the femur in the beginning of a knee joint uh, flexion of a knee joint beginning of flexion of knee joint and the uppermost part will articulate with the lower end of the femur in the mid flex position of a knee joint and during the fully flexion of the knee joint this medial strip will articulate with the lower end of the femur so this is the articulation of a patella with the femur now the applied anatomy but before that we see the important of a ossification there are several ossification center of a patella the one or two ossification center lies in its superolateral corner so when the only one ossification center is present in the superolateral uh, angle it is known as a bi bipedate patella and if the two ossification center is present in the superolateral angle it is known as a tripitrate patella and this bipitrate and the tripitrate patella is symmetrical and it is bilateral right now the first applied anatomy fracture if the fracture of the superolateral angle of a patella occur it should be differentiated from the bipitrate patella we can differentiate it from a bipitrate patella is a symmetrical bilateral whereas fracture may be on one side now there is an outward angulation between the long axis of a thigh and the leg because of this outward angulation there is a tendency of the patella to dislocate laterally outwards but it is prevented by the dislocation by the two factor one is a bony factor second is a muscular uh, factor first we see the bony factor we know the patella posteriorly articulate with the lower end of the femur okay now the lateral edge of a uh, lower end of the femur is projecting more anteriorly and that will prevent the lateral dislocation of a patella the second muscular factor we know the insertion on the medial border and the lateral border of patella the vastus medialis is inserted into the upper two third part of a medial border whereas vastus lateralis in the upper one third of the lateral border so the area of the insertion of a vastus medialis is larger than the vastus lateralis so the more force is given towards the medial side of the patella that will prevent the lateral dislocation of it now the last the function of the patella the patella protects the knee joint from the front but it is not essential for the movement of a knee joint second the patella hinders the beginning of a extension from the extreme flexion because it is sandwiched between the advancing condyle of the femur and the tibia third patella however it facilitate the end of a extension by keeping the ligamentum patella away from the transverse axis of the joint and it increase the momentum of a quadriceps pull so it will uh, alter the chain of direction of quadriceps femoris muscle
If you like this video, like it and share with your friends. And to get the regular update on the anatomy videos, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon.